maybe it's my fault. Maybe I led you to believe it was easy when it wasn't. Maybe I made you think my highlights started at the free throw line and not in the gym. Maybe I made you think that every shot I took was a game winner. That my game was built on flash and not fire. Maybe it's my fault that you didn't see that failure gave me strength. That my pain was my motivation. Maybe I led you to believe that basketball was a God-given gift and not something I worked for every single day of my life. Maybe I destroyed the game. Or maybe you're just making excuses. One more sack, one more rap. Just give it everything you got so you can put yourself in the best position to win. When I got into this journey, you know, I was you know, a little bit bitter because I didn't make it playing Division One basketball, and I was trying to find another outlet. And bodybuilding taught me how to be strong mentally, physically, and emotionally. It taught me how to train hard when no one's in the room, when you're having a bad day, through death, through hardship, through anything that can go wrong. Winning is habitual. If you care about your success more than anyone else in the room, I promise you this, you will be successful at some point in time. It's a marathon, not a sprint, and a measurement of a man is when he gets knocked down, not when he's winning. So I lost a few times. And he always reminded me just to keep on going and be the hardest worker in the room, just like what you say. And when people tell you you can't, you don't look at them. You don't need to look at them. You look in the mirror and you ask yourself, do you give it your all. You look at the mirror and you ask yourself, do you have another rep? You ask yourself, can I go to work when I'm pissed off because I'm about to get fired or something bad happened or lost my girlfriend or whatever it is. You ask yourself, do you have the guts to go after it when no one is watching, no one's patting you on the back and no one is liking your stuff on freaking social media. If you got the guts to go after it, you can put yourself in the best position to win and that's what I did through this entire prep. It was not easy. A lot of people say, oh, Phil, he's got genetics and this and that. I put that God-given talent to work each and every damn day in the gym. Sometimes life is going to serve you up some curveballs, but I challenge each and every one of you to step in that batter's box and take a damn swing. Just take a swing. I'm good at coaching these kids. I'm trained for that. I'm successful at that. I win everywhere I go. That's what I'm good at. This thing over here, this baseball dream, has never, ever worked. I've wanted to play since I was five. It's never worked. She said, you better listen to phone calls. They wanted me to come back in two days and throw again to see if I could actually throw that harder if my arm had fallen off. Because I'm telling my kids they want me to come back and throw again. My kids go, coach, you told us if we ever had our dream in front of us, you'd chase it no matter what. Two days later, I go back and throw again. It rained so hard they had to hand me a brand new baseball every pitch. Sliding up to my knee in mud every time I landed, 98 every pitch. Our big league general manager's there. He goes, you can smile, you're going to be in Texas tomorrow. And I just looked at him and I was stunned. I was like, what? He goes, you're in the big leagues. I'm trying to process how in three months I've lost 60 pounds. I've gone from grading papers, science papers, and report cards to autographs and doing interviews all because of a group of kids who when I pushed them, they pushed back. They got their coach to go to the big leagues who couldn't even believe in himself at the time. My grandfather had this saying, every day I heard it for three years, remember who you are. It took me until years later to get what he meant. Remember who you are is simple. Don't do anything you wouldn't have anybody see you do. It's not what you do when you know people are watching it makes you who you are. It's what you do when nobody's watching you at all. That makes you who you are. That's character. That's my grandparents. And if you make it just about you, you're never going to go anywhere. It's when you make it about something bigger than you. Be a mentor for somebody. Be a dream maker. Be a team player. Nothing is impossible in this world. If you don't believe in yourself, then who's going to believe in you? Mm. Um, 
And I think that was one of the benefits of being an athlete that was always overlooked, in my opinion. It forced me to work harder. You know, like I always try to outwork people, right? That's just how I made my mark. So the game was at seven. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna come to the Staples Center because we're playing, this is when the Lakers had Kobe and Shaq, right. okay? This is, this is like the championship Lakers. I was like, you know, I'm gonna get there at three o'clock and I wanna make sure I make 400 made shots before I go back Jeez. into the room and then I sit in the sauna and I get ready for the game. Who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant already working out. So once I set my foot across that line, I started working out. And so I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off, after I was done, I sat down and of course I still heard the ball bouncing. I looked down, I'm like, this guy's, this guy's still working out? So he was working out, like, it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here and he's still going. And it's not like his moves are nonchalant or <laughs> lazy. He's doing like game moves. You know, um, I sit there and I unlace my shoes. I'm like, I want to see how long this goes. So I sit out there and watch another 25 minutes. And he got done. I said, okay, I think I've seen enough. Go play, you know, come back, get in the sauna, get ready for the game. That game, he drops 40 on us, okay? And after the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy. Like, I, I have to understand, like, why, why he, he works like that. Right. So after the game is over, I'm like, hey, Cove, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, because I saw you come in. <laughs> and, I, and I wanted you to know that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. Wow. You just, you inspire me to be better. Right. And it was the first time I started to see this level of competitiveness where I said, I need to start doing more. Right. Wow. But you, you never get better if you're not willing to put in the time. And basketball is very similar to the game of life. There's gonna be ups and downs. It's not always going to be easy. There are going to be challenges. There's still going to be curveballs thrown at me. But if you put in the work and you constantly put in the work, that's the only way you're going to grow. First year at that junior college, I sit the bench the entire season. Not one play. I'm watching all the starters get all the attention. I'm watching the coach literally look over me. And I pick up the phone the last game. And I call my mom. I said, Mom. I quit. I said, Mom, I want to come home. I said, Mom, just give me a bus ticket back to Columbus, 22 hours. I can get a job in the plant. I'm going to be okay, Mama. My mom said, baby, don't do it. She said, baby, hang in there. She said, Sean, I taught you how to fight. Sean, I taught you how to war. She said, Sean, I taught you how to win. I went back to that junior college, man. And I'm watching TV, three or four guys in a room. I jump up, it's called a Freudian slip. I said, man, I've always wanted to play division one in NFL football. And one by one, the guy turned down the TV and he said, Sean, you'll never make it. Sean, you're not strong enough. Sean, you're not quick enough. Sean, you're not even starting now. And I sat down. When I said the words, play NFL, it connected. It connected with the dream. You might not have nothing around you that validates the dream that's in you. Your friends might not see it. Your family might not see it. Heck, you might not even see it. But when you connect with your dream and you begin to speak your dream, you move into something much, much, much more powerful. It's not creation, it's called manifestation. NFL, that's where I'm going. I said, but here's what I need you to do for me. I need you to pick me up every Friday night, work me out every Saturday morning, and you can take me back home after that. I don't need any money, I don't need any clothes. I just need to make it to the NFL so I can help my mother and my grandma. Can you do that? He said, yeah, I got you. And so he picked me up one Friday night, the first Saturday morning, he shakes me, it's 4 a.m. in the morning. I wake up, I'm wiping the cold out of my eyes. He said, little man, you said you wanted it, right? I said, yes, sir. He said, get up, we're running two miles to this fire station, two miles back home. I said, okay, let's do it. And so he walks by me and he busted a U-turn and he looked up at me, he said, son, I said, yes, sir. He said, I want you to pull that other person outside of you today. No disrespect, I said, but um, I don't see another person. I said, so I understand we have different lives and you have a job and so, if you're tired, I get it. You can go back in the house and you can go to sleep, but you're not stopping me from running to this fire station. I'm running to this fire station, whether you go or not. 
and he looked at me and what he said to me, it pierced my heart in such a way. He said, son, what I'm trying to get you to understand is no matter how hard you work, there is somebody on the inside of you that works even harder. He said, no matter how dedicated you are, there is somebody on the inside of you that's more dedicated. No matter how committed you are, there is somebody on the inside of you that's more committed. And you don't even know what commitment is yet. You think commitment is just saying, yes, I'll do it. But what commitment is, commitment is staying true to what you said you were going to do. Long after the mood that you have set it in has left. Meaning on the days when you don't feel like doing what you said you would do, you get up and you do it anyway. That's what builds character. And he said, I need you to understand the concept that there's another person on the inside of you because one day in your life you will face something that's a lot tougher than you and your strength and your drive and your commitment and your work ethic won't do it. You have to realize that it's something on the inside of you that's greater than anything that life can throw at you and immediately I got it. And so when my life changed, not only did my football career end, I got a paralyzed right arm and hand behind me. Life changed overnight. But I was extremely grateful for it because the whole time I understood that you have to tap into in order to get through one of the darkest, toughest, roughest moments of your life. There's another person on the inside.